This is a recreation of the Flask Lab and is designed for those students who are not in class to do the lab. The question is this, how do changes in air temperature inside of the flask affect the colored water in the beaker below? I'll go over the materials. We have an Erlenmeyer flask, 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a 250 milliliter beaker in which there is 100 milliliters of water which has been dyed blue with just regular food coloring. I think I added about two drops. The, there's the ring stand or burner stand. Um, attached to that is the ring stand clamp which holds the flask. We have a piece of glass tubing which has been inserted into a rubber stopper and that's in the opening of the flask. So in other words, there's, there's a passageway into and out of the flask by way of the tube, the hollow glass tube, through the rubber stopper. And we have ice. So again, the question is, how do changes in air temperature inside of the flask affect the colored water in the beaker below? Now, by, reading the, by look, listening to the question, you can probably get some sense of what the independent variable is going to be here. Um, just as well, you should get some sense of what the dependent variable is going to be. Um, for your final draft of this lab, you're going to be asked to come up with six variables. Um, one, the independent variable. Two, the dependent. And then four other control variables. So be thinking about those. The focus for this lab will be the procedure section and the variable section. Um, so those are the sections that you will be asked to type and put in final form um, when you submit this lab. You'll submit those two sections in final form and then the other sections that you've completed on the rough draft sheet. Okay, um, we then are going to be, you've probably figured out that the independent variable is the, is the temperature of the air inside of the flask. Our question again is how do changes in air temperature inside of the flask affect the colored water in the beaker below? So that's our independent variable. So we are going to actually change um, the temperature of the air inside of the flask and we're going to observe how that affects the water in the beaker. I'm going to first start with um, cooling. And we have a, a small beaker of ice here. I'm going to take a few pieces of ice and we'll put them just on top of the flask or on the base rather that has been inverted. So think about what the molecules of air might be doing right now inside of that flask. Think about all the things that we, we said that molecules do when we discussed the ball and ring lab as we observe what happens. I think you can see that water is starting to rise up the tube very slowly, it appears to almost defy gravity. Is that possible? Or is there some other explanation involving uh, molecular movement? And perhaps pressure. The water may even make it into the flask. I'm going to add maybe one more piece of ice. Now in class, um, for this particular trial, uh, students um, ran it for about four minutes. Um, I'm obviously not going to run it for four minutes, but I think you, you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, and from my view, um, I can actually see that water is starting to 
um, actually fill the flat or come into the flask. You may be able to see that too. Okay, next we're gonna um, we're gonna actually heat the flask. We're gonna we're gonna change the temperature of the air a little bit, and we're gonna actually heat the air inside of the flask, and we'll see what effect that has. So I'm gonna remove the ice. Dry this off a bit. And my heat source is really just going to be my hands. So think about what the molecules are doing right now inside of that flask, the molecules of air and how that and what effect that has on what's happening right now. Obviously you can see the water is um, moving down the tube back into the beaker and we're actually getting a few bubbles. So what are, what's happening with the molecules of air inside of that flask? Think about all the things you know they're doing. And, and how does that explain why we get bubbles in the beaker right now? Again, the focus for this lab is the procedure section and the variable section. Um, to the best of your ability, um, try to write a set of procedures that would explain how to set up and conduct this lab. And also think about variables. Um, there you are being asked for six variables. The independent variable, which I told you, um, and if you remember, that was the temperature of the air inside of the flask, um, the dependent variable, and then try to think about four other variables that, that would essentially be control variables. Um, basically, things you, they're things you want to control through each trial of this experiment. Heating, cooling, and you know, even room temperature. I'll, I'll try it at room temperature in just a minute. Also think about how this lab might relate to the ball and ring. That should be included in your conclusion. Uh, finally, you'll want to think about everyday life applications. When you come up with an explanation for why things are happening as they are in this lab, try to relate that to something that occurs um, in the world. Where do you see this type of thing happening? I'm going to submerge the tubing into the water one more time. And basically right now, this is supposed to represent our room temperature trial. Um, at room temperature, the air inside of the flask should be about the same as room temperature air. So in other words, the inside and the outside of the flask um, are basically about the same in terms of air temperature and pressure. So in that case, we really, sh we really don't see much of anything happening there. 